A very warm welcome, my ladies and gentlemen, to the Vectors virtual session, Hybrid Electric Aviation. Eiffelink's presentation today is about digital twinning of UAS, a hardware in the loop simulator with GNU and Pixel. My name is Alexander Köthe and I'm the CDO of Eiffelink Engineering, speaking to you from our headquarter location in Berlin. In the following presentation, I will show how our digital twin is able to increase the safety of unmanned aircraft systems. I will talk about how we connect the Pixel to Canoe by the canvas and about the possibilities that arise from this. In two examples, I will show you the benefits of the digital twin and that hardware and software of Vector in combination with our solution have a great potential in unmanned aviation. Looking back in aviation history, the first aircraft were wild constructions. Only with the increased number of aircraft, rules were established so that not every pilot was allowed to fly his own built aircraft. It is similar with drones. In the beginning, there were only a few, but the number of unmanned aerial systems is still increasing. We at Alphalink Engineering have a philosophy. We want to make unmanned aviation as safe as manned aviation. Our goal is not to build the next safe drone. We want to make safe systems for existing drones. We do not think about typical topics such as integration into the airspace and secure data link. We think about how we can design the system safely and thus build a bridge between drone manufacturers and the manufacturers of software for safe operation. Because the best software has no benefits without having qualified system to ensure functional safety of the application. As aviation engineer, we learned from manned aircraft. But why is manned aviation so safe? The irony is that some of the most effective safety enhancements in place today are the result of lessons learned from previous accidents. We learn from aircraft accident and improve safety. If we categorize accidents, there are three typical causes that can be identified. The first cause is structural failure. In 90, 89, the fan disk separated from the middle engine of a DC-10. This destroys all hydraulic circuits and the aircraft was uncontrollable. The second cause is system failure. In 2009, the angle of attack sensors of an aircraft froze over. This deactivated the autopilot and forced the pilot to take control. The third cause is human failure. In 2001, a Perfect, intact aircraft was flown into a forest in Switzerland due to insufficient situational awareness of the pilots. We want to take now a closer look at the last two causes. We can avoid all three causes by drawing the right conclusions and testing aircraft intensively. In manned aviation, we use the iron board for this purpose. A very good example of this has been developed by TU Berlin together with the aircraft manufacturer STEM. Their hill allows system testing and pilot training for a motor glider. Okay, and how can we apply that to drones now? I say, never change a running system. And so we also want to build a hardware in the loop simulator for drones. And this is the content of this presentation. Digitalization exists in aviation for a very long time. For example, flight control systems work completely digitally. However, more and more information are being processed digitally and the number will increase in the future, especially for unmanned aerial systems. We want to test the entire systems, including all available information. To do this, we have to transform parts of the physical system into the digital world. This leads us to the digital twin. So what is a digital twin? Digital twin is a real mapping of all components in the product lifecycle using physical data, virtual data and interaction data between them. Based on this definition, we can derive the requirements for digital twinning, which can be formulated in a kind of triangle. The upper corner of the triangle describes the requirements for the operation. The first detailed requirements can be derived from those top requirements. Also, digital twin contains the word digital. We want to keep as many physical elements as possible for safe testing. Let me illustrate this requirement on a real world problem. All of you know McDonald's. When you come into the restaurant, 
you see these delicious burgers on the display. But after you order, you get a burger that doesn't look so great anymore. This is the difference between model and reality. Even the best models will always have difference to the reality. Furthermore, the effort to digitalize every part is too high and unnecessarily. If digital models are used, they should be very accurate. Our digital twin should not be an end in itself. Our aim is to use it to test systems and train pilots to make unmanned aviation safety. Testing is a complex process, so software and hardware used for testing must meet high standards. Therefore, we want to use well-established equipment that is already state-of-the-art for other areas. Today, most drones are equipped with the Pixhawk flight control system. It is a simple and robust hardware that can be used for a variety of applications. Due to its wide distribution and the requirements to use as many physical parts as possible, we want to keep this hardware in the loop. Qualitative engineering expertise is important during flight or during testing. Therefore, we also want to use the UAV with flaps and motor physically. We can trust the data, but the visual flap deflection gives us a good feeling whether a controller gain is too high or too small. Another hardware requirement is to use as many UAS accessories as possible during testing. We want to ensure that these elements works well in real flight test. We can only guarantee this if we ensure that they are operated under the most realistic conditions during the test. But not everything can be used as hardware. Of course, we can bring the UAS into the wind tunnel, but the effort would be unjustifiable. The flight physics, the environment, and the sensors and actuators needs to be simulated. Therefore, we use Simulink. Even if the engineer loves plot, plots, it is also important to get a visual impression of the three-dimensional movement of the aircraft. We can do this by using our virtual flight test environment. The virtual flight test environment is a web-based flight simulation. During testing, the engineer or pilot can either take a perspective in which he is directly behind the drone or observe the drone's movement from a fixed position on the ground. In connection with the ground station, the virtual flight test environment can also emulate a first-person view. Since this tool has so many advantages, it should be also connected to the digital twin. Many pilots use standard tools like Q-Ground Control or the Peaks for Flight Stack. This software should also be usable with our digital twin. Thus, we have set the requirements for both the digital and the real world we have to still define the link between, both, uh, between the, those two words. To achieve this, we need a bridge. And this bridge shall be established by using a canvas. For software and hardware, we want to use valid products that enable safe testing. Therefore, we selected hard and software from Rector that should be used in our digital twin. Thus, we have defined all essential, essential requirements and now we can address the system architecture. We have the drone and the Pixhawk. The flaps and the motors are connected to the Pixhawk via PWM channels. The receiver for the remote controller is connected to the Pixhawk so that the aircraft can be controlled with the remote controller. A radio modem, modem is also connected to the Pixhawk. The other radio modem is connected to the ground station. The serial data transmission is done via the MAFLINK protocol. This exchanges of data takes place in both worlds, the test world and in real flight condition. The Pixhawk is now connected to the VN1600 interface via Canvas. Data is transmitted via the interface to CANU software and then prepared for transmission via CAN interface using a DBC. Canoe established a connection to the flight dynamics model and sensor model in Simulink. The data is transferred to the virtual flight test environment via a UDP connection. So these blocks here belongs to our virtual world with exchange of virtual data and the bridge connects, them, uh, connects uh, the data to the hardware that enables a physical exchange of data. 
data. This architecture achieves all address requirements of our digital twin. But let's take a closer look at the bridge. The PixHawk has a CAN interface, but what is the PixHawk? The PixHawk has an STM32 microcontroller with CAN interface. On the microcontroller, the PIX4 flight stack is implemented, which is based on the NUTX operation system. But the flight stack only supports the UAV CAN protocol for which no DBC exists. Therefore, there is no trivial solution. In order to meet our requirements anyway, we have therefore made changes in the configuration of NUTX. We have written a driver file and integrated it into the flight stack. This allows us to send any topics from the flight stack to Canoe and then process them in the virtual world. In order to show the potential of the hardware in the loop simulation to increase safety in unmanned aviation, I would like to present two examples. The first example shows whether a center failure is correctly detected and handled by the flight control laws. And in the second example, I will demonstrate how easy it is to train pilots for real flight test with the digital twin. For the example of the error of a sensor, we want to use a simple stability, uh, stability augmentation system for the pitch movement. For this, the pitch rate measured by a gyroscope is feed to the elevator with a gain factor. In, case, in the case the sensor produces corrupt data, the controller should be deactivated. This requirement addresses functional safety. And functional safety can be achieved best by using the V model. The requirement of, for the UAS lead to requirements for the software and these are implemented with Simulink. Afterwards, the software in the loop simulation or afterwards, then software in the loop simulation can be used to determine whether the software functions work safely or not. After the implementation of the software on the flight control system of the UAS, a final test will be performed using hardware in the loop simulation. This makes it possible to test specific errors cases in order to handle them when they occur in the real world. The software system for this example is very uh, simple in Simulink. State flow is used to check whether there is an error of the sensor or not. If there is no error, the pitch damper determines the elevator deflection. In case of an error, no signal is given from the controller to the elevator. The test vector shows how function uh, how or the test vector shows the functionality. After the sensor produces here constant uh, values over a, a fixed period of time, an error, an error is detected and the pitch damper then is deactivated, as shown here in this picture. Let's take a look at the video demonstrating the hardware in the loop simulation. We have our software module and copy the block relating to the stability augmentation system. AlphaLink has created a Simulink template that is tailored to the inputs and outputs of the PixHawk. This means that programming is no longer necessary when implementing flight controllers onto the PixHawk. This approach makes the life of some engineers easier. The software module is integrated into the Simulink template at the relevant location. And the code is then generating using the embedded coder. The generated code is copied into the direction of the flight stack and the flight stack is compiled. And then afterwards, the object code is loaded onto the PixHawk. In the following hardware in the loop testing, we will simulate a sensor failure. A sensor error is now simulated in the flight dynamic model. We see the data in canoe and the movement of the aircraft in the virtual flight test environment. And after a short time, the controller is deactivated. We see that it works and so we can have a safer feeling in the flight test. In the second example, the pilot flies the aircraft in full setup with ground station. Since the virtual flight test environment is based on JavaScript, it can be easily started from any web browser of any computer in the network. A web and UDP server is set up by using Node.js. 
the video from the first uh, per, uh, from the first person view of the virtual flight test environment is transmitted via HDMI to the ground station. The pilot is provided with a first person view similar to a conventional aircraft and the most important flight data is superimposed on the video. Especially for flights that require flexible flight guidance, for example an unfamiliar, uh, an unfamiliar terrain, the system helps to fly over target areas precisely in order to take photos or collect data. It is not possible to simulate sensor failures during the flight, similar to the pilot training for manned aviation. This increased safety in unmanned aviation and is only possible with our digital twin. Let us summarize the findings. We want to reduce system and human failures in unmanned aviation. We have shown that this is possible with our digital twin. We can simulate any kind of error in the virtual world and see in the real world what consequences this error has. This allows us to identify weak points in the system design and develop suitable safety functions. With our complete setup, we can increase the level of pilot training and set standards similar to those in manned aviation. We have seen that products of Vector have helped us to achieve our goals. Therefore, we will also use hardware and software from Vector in future projects. We are currently developing the hardware and software for a safety critical parachute release backup system for UAS. For this system, we also want to test the drivers of the microcontrollers. Test equipment of Vector will be used to electronically stimulate the inputs of the microcontroller to simulate the sensor and hence sensor failures. This allows us to be even more certain that our system meets the requirements of functional safety. With this exciting outlook towards the future, I would like to close my presentation. I hope that I give you a good impression of the potential that the combination of vector products and the Pixar together with our established solution promise in terms of increasing safety and meant aircraft systems. Ivory can create a simulation model for any drone tailoring the hardware in the leap simulator to the needs of drone manufacturers and drone operators. This enables safety testing prior to flight testing, saving time and money and increasing the safety for drones and the environment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or visit our webpage alphalink.ir.